Hi, I'm Claire Cousins and welcome back. I um, haven't seen you for a little while, I've been busy doing other bits and bobs, but uh, I've got to the point where now I have got a jar full of um, little bits and bobs. Those of you who've watched previous videos, I've been busy making these, which are little tiny hexes for a large quilt, um, which is growing quite nicely actually. But I've got to the point where I think to myself, I don't like to waste anything. So I thought I'd show you um, a background technique I could use in one of my books, or I might even use it as a book cover. Well, you, if you want to have a go yourself, you can pretty much use it for all sorts of things, depending on how big you want to make it. But I'm just going to make a little piece today. Uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but the wind is howling outside. So it's not a great day to be out in the garden, which is what I have been doing, which is why I've not been able to say hi to you guys. So uh, come to my desk and see what I'm getting up to. OK, so what I've got here on my uh, little lining mat is I've got some uh, violin um, or interfacing with the glue side up. So it's glue side, you can't really see it unless I you can probably see it shine. There's the glue. Um, here's my jar full of little bits, which is going to make a mess. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop these on. Anything that looks quite big. That's too big, really. People say to me scraps, so well, yeah, these are actually too big <laughs> for what I want. So I'm just pulling out the smallest pieces, ideally, you know, the smaller pieces. And if they're not small enough, I should probably have to cut some of this down. So believe it or not, these are too big, some of these. And yet some of you out there are going, my goodness, I would throw those all away. And yeah, perhaps I should have done but batik is far too pretty to throw in the bin. Okay, oops, I've got some threads in there as well. In fact, you can leave threads in. You know, it makes no difference. And what the, uh, at the moment, because it's not been ironed, the uh, interfacing is just going to act as the base. I sort out my smallest, smallest pieces. So this really is using up your scraps. When people say, oh, these are too small and they need to go in the bin, um, I'm going to say, well, actually, you can use them even if they're this small. You can slowly see me building this up. I'll come back when I've completely covered this. Right, as you can see, I've now covered it completely and as the, the pieces are seriously tiny. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see how tiny they are. So if I just put my finger here they are the scrappiest, smallest little bits, so the little triangles, <laughs> little trimmits. And I've just scattered them all on. I've not arranged them. I mean, you could spend hours just formally arranging them, if you like, and putting them into a neat pattern, but I've chosen not to. And I've still got, if I just turn the camera slightly, you'll see I've still got tons of it left. And these are the bigger pieces, um, which... As yet, I haven't decided what I'm going to do with, but I'm sure something will come up. Anyway, next stage, I'm going to put some greaseproof paper on this. Let's go back to here. So I'm going to put some greaseproof paper on that, and then I'm going to iron it with a hot iron. Right, I've put the greaseproof paper over the top. And I'm just going to iron it. This piece of greaseproof paper is actually, uh, this is pretty much all to do with recycling I suppose, because this greaseproof paper was actually in a chocolate box from Hotel Chocolat and it's the layer you get between the menu and the chocolates. So it's not covered in chocolate, but it is covered in 
uh, fabric paint <laughs> now. It does protect my eye from the glue, so all good. There you go, it's still got a cleanish iron. It's my little travel iron, so that's all okay. Now what that does, what that does, it has given me a piece of fabric. I can peel off the greaseproof paper. And they are all pretty much now stuck down. Now that's not good enough, is it really? Um, so what I'm going to do, I could do one of two things. I could stitch straight on that with my all my stitches using a sewing machine with all the different fancy stitches. Or what I might do, which is what I prefer to do, is I'm going to put a layer of organza. And when I do that, you'll see how the effect changes. Now I say organza, I could do it with like a net. So I've got a net here. So I'll just show you how it looks. And this just helps one create another layer and two keep the fabric in place and I stitch it I mean that's the sparkle I mean that's a bit for me too overpowering if I want to stick to the bluey tones I've got a little bit of bluish organza and that'll give me the bluer tones I could let me have a look have a little bit of what have I got here, different blue. So I could change change it by having half one blue, half another blue. Basically what I'm saying is whatever or layer colour organza you put on the top will affect the look. And what's nice what the organza does is where you've got areas where the violin is still showing through, it colours it. So it's quite nice. Quite like that. Um, I could go for, um, I could, I mean, I think this is too heavy, but we'll see. It's always best to try. I've got like a greenish crystal organza. Actually, that actually is quite nice. I quite like the crystal organza. Oh, decisions, decisions. So I've, got in my, I've got a little packet here of different organzas. I don't think the orange will work. Let's have a look at the orange. Orange organza. Doesn't not not work, but I'm not keen. Got a bit of white. That really knocks it back. I'm not that keen on the white. I've also got things like, um, I don't really know what this is called. It's like a sheer fabric, which has got a sheen. Um, that's nice but again the sheen's too much and you lose the batiks underneath for me then I think I'm going to go back to the blue I think I liked the blue organza and I might like, lay that up with a oh it's a bit, I've actually got a bit of green here a bit of green organza oh, and you can see how that changes the colour mm. now this is interesting because and if you can see this, you probably can't see it. This is just a regular organza. And this is a crystal organza, so it's actually got a bit of a sparkle. Ah. Right, what I might have to do... That's actually, that's got a bit of a sparkle. That was what I originally put on earlier, wasn't it? A very pale blue. So what I might do is have half and half. Half of it pale blue and half of it the other one. Like that. Okay. So I'm just pinning this organza down now. Like so. Trim off some of that waste. I don't need on the end. I don't know what I'm like. That will just curl back into the machine. Right, what I've got here 
is a wonder film, Fabulux. Um, it's a variegated colours in the blues and greens and purples. Um, and I'm going to pop that in my sewing machine and then we can start sewing. I'm not sure if it's going to fit there. Okay, so I've threaded up my sewing machine with um, a wonder fill, which is a variegated thread, all in the uh, blues, pinks, greens, etc. Now this is a very basic, it's a silver sewing machine, it's a very basic machine, it's their 1035 and it only has 40 patterns on. I say only, technically it has a lot more than that because you can uh, change the width and the length of them and you can do much more with it. But even so, let me just actually let me show you the selection of patterns this particular model has. Now, I don't think they, this particular model is available anymore, I've had this for quite a few years, but there is still a similar machine. Um, that they sell so it's always worth contacting them in Rushton if you like a nice mach simple machine okie dokie right now I'm going to pop it on here and I think I'm going to go right down the middle and I'm not going to go straight I'm going to go all wonky I'm going to use quite an open pattern I think I'm going to go for number 33 on here and I'm just going to press start because this machine as a start button, I don't have to use a pedal. you can see how it's already stitching I'm hoping you can see that I've done quite a lot of stitching now so I've done some straight stitch and I've done some more of this um, I'm not entirely sure what to call that stitch really but there's different slightly different versions I call that like a bird foot type stitch but it's like a feather stitch in a way so I've, I've incorporated three different stitches and I've put about two or three um, lengths of that going down it. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to incorporate a little bit of couching. Now you can buy a couching foot or your sewing machine might actually have a couching foot with it. If not you can use a standard foot and you can feed it through the centre like that. If you can see that, let me just tilt my camera a little bit so you can see it a bit better. So I've popped it through the middle of my sewing machine. Now what the couching foot does if I show you this first and then I'll find a couching foot and show you the difference. So I've got my piece of yarn, just knitting yarn, and I've got it on zigzag. And I've just meandered down. So you can see that does actually work. Um, but you do need to use a very wide zigzag. Now I'm going to hunt for my couching foot, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I've, this is my couching foot. I found it. And I don't know if you can see, but just there is like a little plate with some grooves in it, and that allows you to feed the yarn into it. So if I get a different colour bit of yarn, let me just show you how that feeds in. And because it's got three, you can actually three feed three yarns in at a time. If you've got three nice sort of thin purlays, you can th feed through three nice different coloured purlays, and that will give you a really nice effect too. So you can see I've got that one in there like that. So let me just start it off near the beginning. Let me just change my foot out. Oh. 
don't know about you, but I notice my screw comes loose quite regularly, and that's more to do with the fact that when I put my machine to free motion, I don't quite tighten it up enough. Clip my other foot back in place, and I've now got me couching foot on. Let me show you how that looks. Now this time I can actually narrow the width of my zigzag. And I can pre-check it as well, so that's still very wide. So that's what I quite like about the couching foot, is you can actually have a much narrower uh, thread and a narrower zigzag. And even though the thread started to go in the wrong direction, it still feeds through properly. So after quite a bit of couching, so I've couched one, two, three, three, four purples. I've couched three of the dark green. I had some dark green yarn and then I've couched it. It's slightly more bobbly. Here it is in the raw state. And then I've carried on with a few more bits of almost like a perlay. So there's some three perlay, there's three of the other yarn. And you can see how that's changed the surface texture quite nicely. So I've got layers now. So I've got the batik at the bottom. I've got my organza at the top to hold that all down in place. Um, I've got my layer of decorative stitching. Which is, I know it's been covered, a lot of it's been covered, but it's still there, it's still holding in parts of it. I don't know, it's interesting how in the camera it's looking quite blue, but in the natural daylight it's actually very purple. And now this would act as a really nice um, piece of fabric that I could put other bits and bobs on top, or I might. Um, turn it into a book cover. So many different things I can take this now. I can hand stitch on this, I might add some beads, I might add some sequins. Or I could actually just cut it up and use little bits of it as petals on a, on a applique piece. So there's more I can do to, with this. Um, I could also, if I wanted to, um, give it a bit of a heat blast and that would um, reveal the batik stronger so the organza might disappear a little bit. If I heat blast from the back or, or iron it, because of the um, man-made fibres, it would also pucker. So I could, if I wanted to incorporate some puckering look, I can pucker it as well. But as I say, this is all I'm going to cover in this video. And uh, if I get the chance, or if I think of another project that I want to do with this, I'll show you what I might do with it. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Um, Hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye for now. Take care.